Hello, we are here at the famous Spectrum Studios testing out this new technology. Uh, my name is Valerie Biondi. I am the co-founder of Civic Studios. And we are here with the other co-founder of Civic Studios, Bruce Winston, as well as one of Hello. our amazing artists and students, Sincere Upshire. We are honored to be here today. Um, and this is green screen technology. I know it doesn't look like it, but we are sitting here in a virtual studio. So cool. Uh, it's hard to imagine what is real and what's not in here. The chairs are real. My dress is real. And we're real. It feels amazing. It's like we're, he it's like we're, in, it's like we're in this amazing studio, but it's like we're not. <laughs> it, it looks great. I think everything looks amazing. Everything's in the right place, the lights are in the right place, the chairs. I especially like our logo in the background. Is this your first time um, being a part of an experience like this? Yes, I've never been on, I've never been on a set before. Have, I've never even seen a set. I think we should talk about like what brings us here today. I mean, we, we are part of Civic Studios and you know, we're here at Spectrum Studios. Our, our missions definitely align. And so what, what brings us here? Um, and, and, and brings us together. Well, we're a creative agency, but we're powered by student youth, and that's why Sincere is here. And we've actually shot some of our projects here at Spectrum Studios, and we've gotten great results. We had an amazing podcast. It was sponsored by Logitech, and we had a lot of fun. But digital media is what Civic Studios is all about. We work with student youth under the direction of industry pros like here at Spectrum Studios, and they create content to benefit the community. That's why we're here. And the opportunity for you to connect to these guys at Spectrum, whew, so cool. I feel like this is kind of this new thing. I always say, you know, art today is the day to, to, to be an artist. You know, I, I, I don't think it used to be this way. I know, Sincere, you probably don't know, you're a little bit young, but when we were growing up, you know, when, when you told your parents you were an artist, they would say, what are you going to do? You know, you're going to be a struggling artist. They would think you're just going to be one of those people that is going to have their paintings at, you know, an art show. But I feel like there's so much more opportunity today to be an artist. And I feel like this is an example of it. Well, what you're talking about is fine art. We're talking commercial art. Commercial art and fine art, they're separate. They're two of a kind. So I would agree that this is an amazing time to be an artist. And you're right, if you put it on the wall and it's in a gallery, there might be some starving involved. But if you know digital media, and if you can put it together through video, audio, digital art, graphic design, you can communicate and you can tell stories, just like this guy, that's what he does. And Valerie, she's a producer. She produces video, and she's a reality TV star. But we're here with the real star, Sincere. Sincere, like, I'm really curious to know about your background. I mean, I know that you like art, and tell me more about yourself as, as a creative and as an artist. When I started creating art, I think I started about in kindergarten. All I needed was a pencil, crayons, and paper. <laughs> I, drew any, I draw anything that comes to my, uh, my imagination, SpongeBob, dinosaurs, especially, um, especially Star Wars. Star Wars is something that I love and I enjoy and it's something that I draw constantly, along with Marvel and, and, the, and along with all the famous heroes that come with Marvel. Sincere, I think you're making the owners of Spectrum really happy right now. I can see them smiling behind the scenes. They're, they're big Marvel, Marvel people. So you like to draw, you said? Yes, I do. Wow. You play a mean saxophone, too. I do. We'll have to get a sample. We'll have to come back and get a sample of you playing saxophone. That's really what impressed us, right, when we met Sincere. You were just like so bold, you know, you just came in and you just were like not afraid to just take control and just talk to us. That was really cool. And you were only in eighth grade when we met, right? Yes, I was. How old are you now? I'm 14 years old. And the reason, and the reason I'm so brave is because I believe you only get one shot to achieve your dreams. <laughs> and what better time to achieve your dreams than the present, right now, sitting in this room. Wow. And that's a message to all youth, adults, a message to people of all ages. Sincere, that scares me. Only one shot? 
Yeah, multiple shots. Because, <laughs> because if that's the case, uh, I should probably leave right now. Wait, what? I've had a lot of different shots. There's a lot of shots out there, man. When you're as old as I am, you get a lot of shots. But I like the fact that you're going for it, and you've got one shot. You want to make it great. What, I'm curious, since you're like, what, is your, what are your dreams? What do, you, what do you hope for? One of my dreams, one of my really biggest dreams is to start a family. That's one of the only dreams I've always had. Because, I mean, when we're little children and the teacher asks us, what do you want to be when you grow up? You mostly hear astronaut, basketball player. But, I mean, as you get older, those things change. And, e and either your view on life it gets more simple or more, or more complex. In this case, one of my dreams is to just start a family, a wife and two loving children. <laughs> That's very specific. Wow. Good for you, my man. Yeah. What a great dream you have. And it's going to happen. You know that, right? Yep. You just got to choose the, the right person. You're a really intelligent <laughs> guy. I mean, it's, it's amazing that somebody as young as you can, can think that far in, in the future. Um, that's amazing. Like, so since you're, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, and, and you, you only have to tell us as much as you're, you're comfortable. How did you get to that point? You know, what made you feel like you, your dream was to start your own family? Was there something that kind of influenced you to feel like you were, you know, wanting that, that family or, um, no, not really. Just as I got older, this seems like that seemed like something that I dream of doing. Just starting a family and keeping it simple. Not, not. I mean, branching out is great. Don't get me wrong. Branching out, it, it's an amazing thing. But sometimes you got to keep it close to home, which is what starting a family really is. Like start your own, start your own little se settlement, and you, and you can branch out from there. Because you can't branch out if you don't have roots that are in the ground. You can't branch out anywhere. I'm curious, how did you, so as um, we might know, Sincere is one of our students um, at Civic Studios. We provide opportunities for youth to learn digital media and make an impact in the community. So we met Sincere uh, this past summer, actually, and he was a part of our program at Olive Harvey College. And so I'm curious, Sincere, how did you come across Civic Studios? What made you decide to, to join us in, in our program? Because what happened was like at first, this is gonna sound crazy, but I actually did not wanna do the summer program because I thought it would be like, like a summer school type thing. And then eventually I just, I just gave in and I decided to pick my classes. And one of the classes I picked was media design and the rest and that's when I met you two, and we started making videos. I met Mr. Keys. I met a lot of people. I was at the showcase. I was at the. I was at the showcase. I worked the spotlight, and the oh, rest. We awesome. have a picture of them. That was awesome. And then, and then every chance I got to work with Civic Studios, I took it, and and that includes being here today. You were the best spotlight guy, by the way. Oh my gosh, Thank he was you. the I best have a picture. assistant. Sincere was like handling this huge spotlight and, and you were just- For the show. You did not see what I was doing in the background while I ate, while I ate- He was eating a sandwich. You were <laughs> no, I was eating a piece of chicken. Oh, a piece of chicken. Yes, chicken works chicken, he was eating. And- While handling um, the spotlight. While handling the spotlight. some talent. But this guy, as far as an assistant, when we would ask him to do something, he would literally run. True. He would run, literally, dude, and you, he was gonna get in trouble for running in the college, but he did it anyway. He ran and he would get stuff and come back and then he'd run back and you were all over it. You were always waiting for an opportunity to do something, and you did it. So that's why you stood out as a star. It was a beautiful thing yeah. this past summer. And you had some competition. There were some other kids there, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I, but I actually enjoy my competition. And some of those, and some of those people who, who, are, who I supposedly was competing with well, my friend, suppose like Austin, he was he was a good friend. I I enjoyed I enjoyed Austin's company. Yeah. Like some of the Austin. people, like some of the people, um, some of the people at the summer program, I could just be playing video games and I'll think about them like, hmm, I wish um Jalen or something was here. 
Kareem. There, yeah, there were some good ones. Good bunch. Yeah, so, I remember a lot good of crew them. members. Jalen, Kareem. If you're out there, I miss you. <laughs> They're out there. That's sweet. So, so you like video games, huh? Mm-hmm. So did you know that this technology uses a video game engine? Yes, I've actually heard of Unreal Engine when it comes to making certain games. I think especially it comes into play with VR, with virtual reality, which someone actually came in and spoke to us about at the college. Oh, Bernard. Bernard, Bernard T, everyone. That's right. Yeah, I was there, but... Um, so that's how you learned about Unreal? Yeah. Tell me what you know about it. That, um... Actually, I don't really know much about it because I wasn't there for the whole thing, but it basically gave you a basic understanding of how virtual reality works and how they create the virtual environment that we're sitting in right now. Yes, we are. Wow. That is and correct. they can create it, especially with Spectrum Studios, like in a VR headset, they create it on a small scale. So, like what we're doing now with Spectrum and Civic Studios, we've created it on a large scale, <laughs> like, like, a, like the set of... Of, of a movie, supposedly. You are the best representative for this. Did you know that? Uh, without I think Spectrum is going to hire you now. I was going to say, I this think. is a candidate for the future Spectrum crew, without a doubt. Yeah, keep talking. They're going to hire man. you as their spokesperson. I mean, he's the future, there's no doubt, yeah. right? You, you, you pick up on this technology so quick, and you know, you're natural at this, sincere. Yeah. So Thank you, you so much. You got to keep that up, man. What an honor to be at Spectrum Studios today with Valerie and Sincere. I'm Bruce Winston, and we've had a blast. We're going to take a short break right now, but we're going to come back with more excitement and to talk to the founders, owners of Spectrum Studios and learn all about their technology. Welcome back everybody. Here we are in Spectrum Studios in their virtual studio environment. And this is really cool. We actually have the owner with us, Nick, from Spectrum Studios, that's gonna tell us about the technology and how it all works. We've got Valerie Biondi, and obviously, Sincere, our amazing student crew member is with us. It's an exciting day at Spectrum Studios, Chicago. How's Hello, it going, man? Good. This is awesome. Good, thank you for coming. Thank you so much. We're happy to see all of you. And really proud that we're sharing this technology with you as like first people here in Chicago because I personally don't know anyone else who does it here. Yeah. That's awesome. Sincere, can you believe this is the only game in town for this type of technology? No, I cannot. This actually seemed like when I first came this morning, it actually seemed like really common technology, but now that I look at the TVs, the cameras and everything, this does not seem like just average, just green screen, put everything in type thing. <laughs> no, everything moves with us. It's a very interactive environment. I and say. I think you and your team did an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you. So just for, for the audience who does not understand fully like what's, what's going on here, I'm gonna um, ask our camera operator so he can just you know pan left and right up and down so you can see um, the the virtual space and then we're going to show you the raw footage so you can see the how does it look in reality wow, just that's it's cool. just a green wow. screen but everything you see right now it's um, it was built in the unreal engine we spent a couple of weeks working on this set so we had a, like a raw template and then uh, some of the object objects like the C stand it's actually real it's holding the real microphone but I hope this technology goes to the point where you actually cannot recognize what is real what is not real yeah as you can see the microphone is real but it's in the virtual studio sincere are you real I yeah I'm real okay <laughs> okay I know the table is real okay yeah yeah but everything else. This is oh really interesting. I mean, this is definitely a first experience for us. I mean, even, even being in production, I'm so used to, you know, having set builders and just everything that it takes to go, you know, to do production. And I feel like this is just so convenient, right? Because you just like have everything there. You just step into a virtual space. Mm -hmm. um, how did you learn about this? Like, how did... So, um, 
actually, I'm not the only one owner of the studio. We have uh, Pablo here. He's behind the, the camera. And um, hey, so I think he saw this technology, but when it was just starting, one of the like YouTubers, he, I think he's Swedish, and, and um, he was just doing some tests. But, um, and Pablo showed it to me. And um, so here it started with us just um, buying a VR helmet for gaming. And then we used that tracker to put it on camera and um, to use it to match the camera position in the virtual space with the reality. But right now it came to the point that the same company, they made the full set of uh, virtual production um, Vive trackers that, m that was made only for production. So the device that you can see on the camera right now, the tracker, it says Vive. This is what does the job. When, when we're moving the camera in the real world, uh, you can see that like, it's matching the movement of the virtual world and we have the parallax effect. So we have th that feeling of reality. So we also calibrated the lens uh, with the same uh, focal length as the, uh, um, our virtual camera is. So we match our virtual camera lens and also the position of the camera, whatever you move it, if you can get closer, or you can get further and it's gonna as well as we have another closed camera actually and we have another tracker so when we move our camera the background behind us also moves otherwise it would just stay the same the camera would move from one to another but background stays the same so <laughs> yes yes nick I, I guarantee bruce sincere and i we have no idea what you're talking about well, you know, <laughs> it's ma it's we call it magic. Yeah, okay, <laughs> for yeah. the record, movie okay. magic. It is. It's movie magic, without a doubt. No, and you know it's spectacular. And I forgot to mention. Uh, we have, uh, as you can see, in every corner, one, two, three, four. You see, we have um, sensors, and they can actually read. Those are the sensors that are reading the position of our tracker in the studio and sending this information into the software called Eximetry which actually we're doing not only live recording, live rendering, but we're doing live editing. So this wow. program is going to be rendered and mm -hmm. edited after we finish shooting. So real quick, and I'm, I'm so sorry, you know the thing I really respect about you, Nick, you always talk like you're just like Albert Einstein. Like you say, you know, I, I really respect you. You have a passion for cinematography and production, and um, I think that's amazing. What about somebody that like would know nothing about production? And this is just for us because mm -hmm. I don't want to say in layman's terms, but like um, just kind of in simplistic terms, mm -hmm. what exactly is this? What are we doing and how does it work? Uh, we are putting, in the simple words, we're putting real objects in the virtual environment and making it look like it's one thing. So again, Right now, this studio, it's, it, looks, it still looks like a virtual studio, but our goal is to make it look like you cannot actually recognize if it's real footage or what is real, what is not. And then this is what they do in movies, they, but they do it on post-production. So they shoot it on green screen, and they probably spend like quarter or half of the budget to make for, uh, visual effects after that. So, but we want to try to do it live. So the camera operator actually sees that he's already in the virtual environment and he's filming uh, in that particular scene. That's, that's fantastic. That's, that's yeah. the goal, yes. So cool. Yeah, I'm here, I'm listening. <laughs> so um, since the background like moves with us and everything like that, mm -hmm. this is just a question. What would happen if I got her from this chair? Like, like say for example, like the, TV, like the little TV with the rotating, with the logos and everything. What would happen if I tried to touch something in the virtual environment? Would my hand just like go through it? Probably, yeah. Or you're gonna just fall through the texture. And oh. like in computer games, you know, sometimes oh. it glitches. And uh, yeah, so we had to make it look and also we have to match our real size with the size of the studio so it looks actually like it's real. But we, ma we can make this TV like a l much larger than it is and it's not gonna look realistic. So we spent some time to make it look like this, but on default, it actually doesn't look that great, so. Yeah. 
So for the audience out there, uh, we really have the best seats in the house because we see all this technology and all these screens and all this really cool stuff happening right now in front of us. The lighting, all of the staff, the crew members that are out there, they've all got a, a position and they're all doing something unique. We have Vlad, he is uh, basically operating the, the whole system there with a computer and uh, he's doing the editing and switching between cameras and we have two other operators, Pablo and Paul. Pa uh, Paul is doing uh, close up, Pablo is doing wider shot and Pablo has a dolly. So we put a dolly so we can move the camera so people can see that effect, you know, because it's very important. This is the whole idea of having tracker over here just to move inside your environment. Nick, what, what types of uh, productions might y you do in, in this environment? Um, at this point, we are aiming for news, podcasts, um, any kind of, you know, more or less simple videos uh, for some reasons. But um, in future, we, we already have people who want to do like music videos or live concert shows. Honestly, whatever you can imagine, because you can you can buy those sets and locations on Unreal Engine Market, or you can make them just by yourself. It doesn't really matter. So if someone says, "Okay, I want to build your apartment," if you give me the plan of your apartment, I can just do like a replica in Unreal Engine, and instead of going to your apartment, you can come here and we can shoot inside of your apartment, and I can place the lights the way I want. I can make any textures of the wall, any size of any you know, objects or I can move the furniture around. Uh, so it's, it's pretty nice. Lots yeah. of options, no doubt. A lot, yeah. That's so good. it's, it gives what cinem cinematographers, they want a full control and consistency of lighting. When, you, when you're shooting outside, sun is moving always, always. So let's say you started shooting in the morning and then you go throughout the day and at the end of the day, the sun looks like it's, it's a sunset, you know? It's not gonna match what you shot in the morning. So with this, you have a consistency. So it doesn't really matter. You can shoot it today, the, the half of the scene, and like after a week, another half of the scene is going to look like one thing. So, you mentioned something earlier about uh, doing live broadcasts. Is that yes. your plan? Uh, yes, we can actually whatever we're shooting right now, we can broadcast it live already. We oh, ju we're just wow. not doing that because you just basically connect the out video output to the streaming board, and you're you're online. So it's very easy. And I, I think what's really cool too that I learned earlier from um, your uh, cameraman was that you can adjust the lighting actually yes. in, in the virtual space. With, with just, you know, clicking a couple buttons, we can move ourselves inside the studio without actually moving it. We can keep sitting here, but we can move ourselves to any, any um, position, any corner of the studio. And um, what's great about Unreal Engine, somehow, I don't know how they did that. The, those, those people, they are just, you know, genius. But when you move your real objects inside the environment, the virtual light affects your real objects. So if we're gonna move, if we're gonna move ourselves to the shadow, Pablo, can you, can you show the darkest part of the studio? If you pan to the right, yeah, yeah. So if we're going to be moved over there, we're going to be dark, even though we have all this lighting here. Love it. We're going to be, it's going to look like we're sitting in the shadow. But we built the virtual lights inside the studio, so we all look bright and we match it with the lighting that we have in the real world. So that's, really that's cool. the idea. That that's this awesome. Is how it works. Look sincere, there's your spotlight. Wow. You see behind Nick's. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Sincere. It's just a prop. It's not, it's not a real light, but it's, it's a spotlight, yeah. I mean, that's pretty realistic. It's amazing. It's like a cute little artifact. Yeah, yeah. Well, we just, you know, we just placed a couple of different props that make it look like a broadcast studio. That camera looks like a piece of chocolate, but <laughs> it doesn't look real, you know. Yeah. But it's, you know, we just wanted to, we didn't have like the right asset to add. We didn't have like realistic model of like, let's say this camera, but we just added to make it look like it's a broadcast studio. What, what yeah. types of people do you need involved to make this happen? First of all, people who understand how, how it works. When people understand, they can create their, make their you know, creative ideas out of it. Because 
again, some of the people, they, they probably think like this is just old green screen technology and we're just, you know, filming it on green screen and then we're doing post-production and putting that background, but it's not. It's it totally different. Not. It, it It requires different understanding. It's different technology and it's going to be the future because um, right now it's a time when the, the gaming industry is getting involved, is getting immersed together with uh, virtual production. And it just opens a lot of opportunities for people, ex especially like for younger generations, because they're so interested in video gaming and they're all learning like Unreal Engine. So yeah. if you have knowledge of Unreal, Unreal Engine, it's not going to take you too long if you want to implement it to, to the video production. So that's exciting. Yeah. So I you, you do can this start all the time. learning. It's it's very yeah. like intuitive. It's not too hard to learn. Some some of the stuff it's it requires time and patience, but yeah, this is this is how it's going to look at least like that. I'm feeling like Civic Studios is going to be doing an ongoing show. It's another <laughs> moment of history breaking activity at Civic Studios. I can't believe we're here. I feel like this is part of our, like it's a new thing and, and we're part of the history, the beginning of all this, you know? It's really yeah. fun. I it hope so. And it's, it, it's, it's exciting. And there's so many creative people in Chicago that, that really need this type of technology. And like you said, once they get to know it and understand it, they infuse their own ideas and creativity. That's beautiful. That is a great opportunity for really anybody that wants to do this. Good job, you guys. So yeah. I, well I have another question. Um, if, if I am a, a customer or somebody looking to shoot in this virtual environment, um, let's say that I'm an animator. Could I come with my own um, design and, yes. and you can use that and, and upload that into the engine? Um, do you provide the designs or a little bit of both? How does that work? Um, as you can see, for this studio, we did full design, even like the TV moving picture and logos and all that. You can, it's right now we made it very easy. You just drop it to the software and connect it to the TV. You can have any, any video or photo posted on, on that screen. But in terms of your, your you know, re uh, your question, um, we can create anything if you don't have any ideas of what you want, but you can come yourself or you can bring a designer and we can sit together and you know build whatever you want with any any color schemes and anything. Yeah. So anything can be built in this engine. Yeah. Awesome. That is so cool. Okay. Before we finish, we wanted to give you a couple gifts. Okay. Yeah. Um so it's good. Since you already have uh, Civic Studios shirt. We're going to give you ours. This is the smallest we have. So this is for you. Thank you right. so much. So cool, Sincere. Wow. And this is Thank you. fancy toy for you. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Oh, that is fantastic. Wow, what a treat here that is great. at Spectrum Studios. This it is definitely fantastic. is. Maybe you should open your gift. That's the best part. Thank you so much, Nick. No problem. I love it. There's a button. Pull it down. Whoa! Oh, wow. <laughs> Too cool! It's like pineapple texture. I also want to give a shout out to your awesome production crew. I wonder if, if we, if we well, can get them well in, in the picture. Gentlemen, can you guys well, come well in well and, and join us on camera? And there they are. This is Paul. The masters of digital technology. Pablo and Vlad. Bravo, gentlemen. Bravo.